Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on an introduction to one-way ANCOVA. As always, if you find this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. ANCOVA stands for Analysis of Covariance. And a one-way ANCOVA is an ANCOVA that has one independent variable. The one-way ANCOVA tells us about the difference between adjusted means in two or more unrelated groups. So if we think of the one-way ANCOVA in comparison to the one-way ANOVA, for the one-way ANOVA we would say the difference between the means in three or more unrelated groups, because if we just had two groups, we would be using a t-test. However, in this model, ANCOVA, we have a covariate included in the model. So if we only had one independent variable, and that independent variable only had two levels, and we had a covariate, we would use one-way ANCOVA. If we had one independent variable with two levels and no covariate, we could use one-way ANOVA or an independent samples t-test. The null hypothesis for one-way ANCOVA is the adjusted means of each level are the same. Instead of the one-way ANOVA null hypothesis, which is the means at each level are the same. So in the ANCOVA, the means are adjusted, and those adjusted means are examined for differences. In a one-way ANCOVA, if you have an independent variable that has three or more unrelated groups or levels, that would require a post hoc test. So the ANCOVA would tell you if there's a difference between the levels adjusting for covariate, but it will not tell you where that difference is. So if you consider the independent variable treatment, and we think of three counseling treatments, CBT, psychodynamic, and group therapy. The ANCOVA would tell us that there's a statistically significant difference for that independent variable, but not where the difference is. We wouldn't know if the difference is between CBT, psychodynamic, CBT, group therapy, or between group therapy and psychodynamic. You could also have more than one statistically significant difference in those pairs. For example, all of the pairwise comparisons could be statistically significant. So now let's take a look at the elements of a one-way ANCOVA. You need to have one independent variable for a one-way ANCOVA. And this independent variable, as I mentioned before, needs to have two or more levels. This is a between subjects design. A participant cannot belong to more than one level at the same time. So in the example of the three levels of one variable, CBT, psychodynamic, and group therapy, each participant in the study would only belong to one of those groups, so between subjects design. You also need to have one dependent variable. This is the outcome variable. And the dependent variable needs to be measured at the interval or ratio level of measurement, which is known as the continuous level of measurement. In a ratio level variable, the distance between the observations on the scale are meaningful, and there is a true zero. So zero on a ratio scale represents an absence of the construct being measured. For example, the Kelvin temperature scale. Zero represents an absence of heat. Interval is the same as ratio, except it does not have a true zero. So the example there would be the Fahrenheit temperature scale. It has a zero, but that zero doesn't represent an absence of heat. For a one-way ANCOVA, you also need one or more covariates. And again, these are measured the interval or ratio level of measurement. So the idea here with the covariate is that we have this independent variable with two or more levels. We have a dependent variable, our outcome variable. And we have a covariate which is another variable measured at the continuous level of measurement. And we're worried that this variable has a strong effect on the dependent variable. 
so it's acting as a confounding variable. And we want to control for that variable. And that's what ANCOVA does. ANCOVA lets us look at the differences between the levels of an independent variable on a dependent variable while controlling for one or more covariates. So using the example with the one independent variable and the three counseling treatments, CBT, psychodynamic, and group therapy, let's assume that the dependent variable is some measure of functioning. And this measure is known to be influenced highly by intelligence. So we have a group of, say, 90 participants, 30 in each level of the independent variable, CBT, psychodynamic, and group therapy and their intelligence is measured as part of the study, and that becomes a covariate. So in this example, we want to determine the effect of the treatment on the dependent variable while controlling for intelligence. So we wanna know the effect of the treatment on functioning while holding intelligence constant. So we would say that we're looking for the effect of treatment on functioning while partialing out intelligence. Now taking a look at the assumptions for a one-way ANCOVA. For a one-way ANCOVA, we have the assumption of independence of observations. So all of the observations need to be independent, just as is the case for a one-way ANOVA. There's also the assumption of normality. The residuals must be normally distributed for each level of the independent variable. So in the example of the independent variable treatment with three levels, the scores on the dependent variable for each level of the independent variable for CBT, psychodynamic, and group therapy would have to be tested to see if they're normally distributed. So that would be three separate distributions that would be tested. And to see if a variable is normally distributed, oftentimes we use the Shapiro-Wilk test, and that returns a p-value or probability value. If that value is less than 0.05, we would assume that we have violated the assumption of normality. If it's greater than 0.05, we would assume that we have met the assumption of normality However, we want to include additional information when looking at normality. For example, the skewness and kurtosis of the variables, as well as we want to take a look at the histograms. The next assumption for one-way ANCOVA is the assumption of homogeneity of variances. And this is usually tested with the Levine's test. With the Levine's test, just like Shapiro-Wilk, the output is a probability value. In the case of Levine's test, if the value is less than 0.05, we would assume that we violated the assumption of homogeneity of variances. And if it's greater than 0.05, we would assume we have met the assumption of homogeneity of variances. The next assumption for one-way ANCOVA, there is a linear relationship between the covariate and the dependent variable for each level of the independent variable. And the last assumption is homogeneity of regression slopes. And what we're looking for there is to make sure there's no interaction between the covariate and the independent variable. I hope you found this introduction to one-way ANCOVA to be useful. Thanks for watching.